and welcome back to Tech Tuesday. Before I start today, I just want to throw out a gigantic thank you and show my appreciation to everyone who has uh, subscribed already to the channel. Uh, this is a new channel for me. Uh, actually, it's not really new. I've had it for a while, but I haven't done anything with it um, So uh, until recently. And uh, you have all stepped up. So we just reached the thousand subscriber mark, which is a which is amazing. So um, so thank you, thank you very much. I really do appreciate it. Um, if you haven't subscribed and want to continue uh, joining in on the fun here with all the art madness, uh, please consider hitting that like and subscribe. So with that out of the way, uh, one of the most common questions that I get and that I hear out there is how to price your work. This is a good one. This is a real good one. Um, art isn't a commodity it, like oil or gold or anything like that. There isn't a standard fixed amount and that can make things very, very confusing as you're getting into this. Um, if you're looking to sell your art and you look online, for instance, at uh, what other people are selling artwork, it is literally all over the road. <clears throat> and uh, that can make everything very confusing. So today's Tech Tuesday is going to be kind of a breakdown of how you can kind of make sense of that and give you a baseline on, on what you need to do to kind of be sustainable and uh, not give away your art, uh, it, it, which is the, the biggest the biggest pitfall for a lot of artists trying to getting trying to get into it or getting into it, uh, they tend to um, they tend to underprice their art and uh, to sell it and and that's just not sustainable. So we're going to go over a few things. So that is the first thing really <clears throat> to change your mindset. If you elect to take money for your art, you are now in business. So that is even just one piece. So in order to kind of get your head into that, um, you really need to think about it like a business. And I know, you know, art is free and it, it's emotional and it's a part of who you are. And that is that that will never change. But the moment you take money for it, it does change. Half of it changes anyway, not your creation of the art, but then how you deal with the art afterwards. It's still emotionally attached to you. and. None of that changes, uh, but in order to make sure that you and your collector are both protected, you need to think about it like a business. Now, that may sound dry and scary, but it's really not. So in order to um, sell a product as a business, you really need to know what your cost to create that, that, that item is, and uh, it's no different for an artist. So the best place to start is to break down your overhead to break down what it costs you to make that piece of art. Um, it's often overlooked, especially if you're doing this part time, because you have a place to live. You, you're probably painting in that place and you don't think about the extra cost of electricity, um, the wear and tear in your car as you go to drive to get supplies, the actual cost of supplies, things like that. So the first thing to do is start looking at what you're spending to do your artwork. Uh, and in the beginning, it's not going to be that much. So it's just a matter of kind of taking a look at what you're spending on paints or ceramics or tools or those type of things. So figure out what roughly you're spending and that'll give you kind of a baseline. And again, if you buy a tube of paint and it lasts you for 50 paintings, it's not going to be that much. So it's just a matter of really figuring out what that is because we want the numbers. We want to be exact here as exact as possible. So once you have your overhead and think about everything. So it's not only the supplies and that that fraction of electricity, you know, as you turn on more lights to do your art. Um, it's also, like I said, the wear and tear in your car, the gas that it takes you to go to get those supplies, uh, the cost it, it, it would it would you would incur to ship something, package and ship it. Uh, things like that, the heat, you know, the, to keep the studio warm or keep that spot warm, um, all those type of things you want to kind of really, really think about. Um, if you keep track in your family budget, you'll have a good idea anyway. But if you don't do that, it's a good time to start. So uh, again, seemed really dry, but this is the way we're going to get there. Uh, so once you have that, the next thing you want to do is imagine your hourly rate. So think about it this way. If you're working full time, Think about the amount of money that you'd want to make or you'd need to make to take on a second job. So whatever that number would be. And of course, that number um, 
has to reflect the time that you'll be away from your friends and family because you'll be working that second job, things like that. So think about in your head if someone came up to you and said, hey, I have this job that I really need you to jump on board with. I know you're working full time. What would you need to make? That's the number you want, and that's your salary. So when you have those two numbers, you kind of put them together, and then you double it because that's your business's profit. So what you've done in the beginning is you've found out the cost that it would keep every, keep the lights on, essentially. And the second is the profit, which was your growth for, for your business. <clears throat> so that number um, will give you uh, a good base starting point for what your time is worth spending on that art. Um, and again, I know it goes in the face of doing art, you know, running through the field with no shoes on um, and, you know, painting with fairy dust or whatever. But um, but y you do need to look at it kind of coldly so that you can get this number. So this this hourly rate. Um, so that will give you your base. And uh, once you have that, it makes it a lot easier. So say, for instance, your base number turns out to be fifty dollars per hour. Now, you know that if you take on a painting for someone and it's going to take you 10 hours, you know now that painting to keep the doors open and the lights on is going to cost $500. So that's just a, a, an example. Again, your, your number is going to be completely different and then uh, you'll be set to go. So that number, because you've included the profit, will also take care of uh, you being in a show, for instance, and that show or the gallery that runs that show is going to take a percentage of that. Essentially, what you're doing is now you're sharing the profit with them, not your cost of doing business. So here's what I mean about that. So say you don't include that doubling, that profit, and your number is $25. Now, that's what it costs to produce that artwork. That's what it costs you to spend the time to do it. That's what costs. That's the cost of buying the materials, all that. And then you get into a show and you, um, you, you, your painting sells in that show and the gallery takes 50%. So now you're losing. So you're not, you're not making enough money to cover what it costs to make that, that painting. So I say this because when you get to the doubling part, again, because we are so passionately attached to our artwork, it's difficult to, to attach the word profit to it in a way because it's that uh, starving artist mentality. But uh, you really have to look at it as a win-win. It has to be a win for everyone. You can't take a loss on it because it's not sustainable. You won't be able to keep doing it. Uh, and and that, that's what that, that is. So always think of that that win-win and um, it'll... it'll it'll help you uh, to stick by your guns essentially when it comes to things like that. And again, I use the $50 mark. It could be a hundred, it could be 200. Uh, whatever that number turns out to be is, is what you want to look at. All right. So that number again, will give you confidence. It also give you confidence when you do an estimate. So if someone comes up to you and says, now I, I would love you to paint this painting for me. What would it cost? You don't have to stand there like a deer in the headlights. You can look at it accurately and say, okay, I know that's going to take me 10 hours to do. So the painting's going to be $500. So the uh, profit area that doubling also is your place to um, to offer a discount. So um, if, uh, for instance, if a friend or family member uh, would like something done for you and you feel that, you know, you want to you want to give them a break, essentially. Again, it has to be a win win. Um, of course, you're going to do stuff for your family. I mean, that's that's just the way it is. But if your family really or friends really want to support you, um, this is this gives you an accurate way that it's a win for everyone. You can remove your profit from it and they can just pay your cost to make it. And that's that works out really well. Um, again, there's a whole different thing about value in art, too. You should always get that same value. Um, and I'll touch on this really quickly, but I, this is a whole other video, too, for giving away art. Um, again, I'm big on win-win. So if... Um, if you give away a piece of art, make sure that what you what you or your business receives in return is of equal value. So, for instance, if you donate a piece to uh, your favorite charity, you know that piece of artwork is going to generate. Um, say, say they then raffle your painting. You know that your painting is generating the same value it, it, it was when it was being sold. You know what I mean? So, so that, that feeling, that win-win is still, is still there. So it, 
it works the same way if you're giving away the art but again now you know that value so uh so so that's a big thing and the same thing with family you know if you uh or fa friends if you give that painting as a gift you know what the value of that painting is now and that's that that gives you confidence it, it it'll give you confidence and it'll like i said it's a win for everyone all right so one quick uh, kind of point on the whole uh, marketing and looking at what other people are doing. So that's advice I hear a lot. And there is a lot of truth to that, which means you kind of look at what other people are selling their artwork for uh, that is similar to yours. That's both good and bad. Obviously, you have no idea of what that person's overhead is and what it costs them to make that art. So sometimes... Um, or if they're even doing it accurately, you know, they may be producing a piece of artwork that's worth, that would cost you a lot to do, that they're giving away, literally giving away. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, kind of a, it's kind of a thing you gotta take with a grain of salt as you're looking at other people who are selling similar work to yours. Um, it's a good idea to get a feel for the marketplace and, and what, what is selling and how they're selling it. Um, but to use their numbers as your numbers can be a dangerous thing. So uh, I caution you for that. All right. So the wild card. The wild card is the duct taped banana for thirty-five or three hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars. This is where art gets interesting. Uh, th there, there is a lot of room for growth, um, and you should plan for that. Uh, you should not plan to. Um, hit on a pet rock idea or a duct taped banana that that you know will knock it out of a park for millions of dollars well that's awesome it doesn't often happen so planning for that is probably not sustainable either but you can plan for growth uh, and the way that happens is number one with increased demand so as you do this more and more and more people want your artwork you're going to have less and less time to do it the demand will be higher on you so as your, as your time becomes more valuable, that also, that will increase the, the amount you ask for your artwork. So that's where the real growth comes from. The other minor growth comes from overhead in a way. Um, as you become um, more and more busy, essentially, your overhead's gonna increase as well. You're gonna need to um, increase your salary to go full time, for instance, or um, you're gonna use more electricity more supplies, more everything. So increase in, in, your, in your bottom line will come from that as well. So that'll also increase your artwork price as well. So those are the wild cards. The, um, the increased demand is really where your, your bigger jump will come from as far as increasing the cost of your art. And that is that wild card, how popular you become. Um, so, so that's where that real growth com comes from. And it's nice because it's it's uh, self-leveling in a way. You don't have to decide that. You can plan for that. You can say, okay, I want to be an artist that's completely sustainable, that, that this is full time and that I'm making this amount of money. You can plan for that and you can aim for that. Um, but your your demand will really will really control that. So if if you, you feel that, but yet you're only selling one painting a year, your demand's not that high, so you have to work on that. And essentially, that's what the marketing is and doing high quality work and getting it out there and uh, all of that. That increases your demand. And again, that's a whole other video. All right. So I threw a lot at you, but I want you to kind of just take the basics to start. Again, you're going to look at what you spend accurately to make your art a piece of artwork or a piece of artwork over a certain amount of time, say a month. So you want to look at that number for real, and then you want to figure out what your salary is, what you would need to make to, to take on that second job. And then you're going to double it, and that's going to be your number. So that's what I want you to take away from this. And again, this is a starting point. This isn't carved in stone either, uh, it's, but it gives you that confidence when you start looking at, you know, what do I charge for this? All right, so I hope this helped. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the um, comment section below. And um, again, if you like this and uh, you are not subscribed, please consider subscribing. I would deeply appreciate it. Um, we're growing a nice community here and um, I'm having a blast. So for Steve Leahy and Tech Tuesday, I will see you guys all on the next one.